everyone. Today we are going to do the 10M Mastery Static Problem. Um, and I'm going to um, do the first part with you and then quickly walk you through the rest of it, just so that we have a firm grasp on how to journalize these transactions in the sales journal and in the cash receipts journal. So the first tip I'm going to give you is look at the source documents. If it is a sales invoice, so S321, it's going to be journalized in the sales journal. If it if the source document is a receipt or a terminal summary, so R348 or TS6, it would be journalized in the cash receipts journal. So the first transaction says sold merchandise on account to trailer stores for $3,248 plus sales tax. It tells you down here in the directions that the sales tax rate is 7%. And so we would need to then determine what the sales tax would be. So our first First step would be to get our calculator and they're giving us the amount um, that we sold on account. So it's um, $3,248 and we're going to multiply that by 0 0.07 or 7%. That's going to give us $227.36 and that's the amount that's going to go into sales tax payable. Then the total that was given to us, the amount of merchandise sold, is going to go in sales credit. And we would add these two together to give us the amount of accounts receivable. Again, to double check yourself, make sure your debits equal your credits. Um, also, make sure we're putting just the name of the customer. We don't have to put accounts receivable, Taylor Stores. Um, we would just put Taylor Stores. And the sales invoice number, 321, does not have to include the S because all um, transactions journalized in the sales journal are going to be sales invoices. The next transaction says receive cash on account from Jenkins and Sa Sanders LLP covering S3. Um, 12 for $945. This is a receipt as a source document, so it would be journalized in the cash receipts journal. So we're going to put the date and then the name of our customer and then the source document number. Because we have multiple types of source documents in this journal, we are going to put the R in front of the 348 to represent that it's a receipt, uh, which is a source document. Now, because this said uh, receive cash on account, whenever you see that phrase, we know that we're putting the amount in the accounts receivable column. It didn't mention any discounts or anything along those lines, so we are just putting the equal amount in the cash debit column. The next transaction on the fifth recorded cash and credit card sales. So whenever that happens, um, or it's a terminal summary, what we're doing is um, we are putting the date, a check, and the source document number, TS6, the total will go in sales credit. So in here, it says um, the total is $1,485. That's the amount of sales. But we also collected sales tax. That's liability that we need to keep track of. So we're putting that in the sales tax payable column. And then we're adding those two together to get the total amount of cash that we received. So that would go in the cash debit column. Our next transaction um, is receive cash on account. Um, and this transaction is going to have a discount. So whenever you receive cash on account, you put the name of your customer and then the total um, that is here is going to be the amount that goes in accounts receivable. So we have luxury suites, there's the source document number, and then the amounts in account and accounts receivable. Now in the transaction, it doesn't tell us um, what, it says less than 2% discount, but it doesn't tell us what that discount is. So in order to figure it out, we're taking the $4,219 and we're multiplying it by 0 0.02 or 2% 2 to give us 84.38. So that goes in the sales discount column. And then we will subtract these two amounts to get the total cash discount of $4,134.62. Then we'll put, um, then we'll go to our next transaction which is sold merchandise on account. So this is going to be uh, a sales invoice. Um, and so it goes into the sales journal. So we're putting the date, the 10th, 
the name of our customer, Southwestern University 322, the sales invoice number. Then it tells us the total of accounts receivable goes here. And then it says we're tax exempt uh, or Southwestern University is tax exempt. So you would just put the same amount in sales credit and they will equal. On the 12th, it says receive cash on account from Daniel Smith Promotions. So we receive cash on account. So put the date, the name of the customer, the source document number. Um, we will put accounts receivable, the total amount, and then the total amount in cash. So that one's pretty easy. And then lastly, we have another terminal summary. So recorded cash and credit card sales. It breaks down the total um, of the sales, the sales tax, and then the total cash. So we will plug in, again, the total will go into sales credit. Then the tax will go in the sales tax payable. And then the biggest number is going to go into cash. Our next step is going to be to total improve the sales journal. So we're going to total the sales journal, last day of the month, the word totals, then accounts receivable, debit, sales credit, sales tax payable credit. Then what we're going to do is we are going to make sure debits equal our credits. So debit totals, credit totals. We'll um, add those all up to make sure our debits equal our credits. Next, we're going to do the same thing for the cash receipts journal. So we're going to put the last day of the month, the word totals, zero, zero, add up each column, and then we are going to make sure our debits equal our credits. Now, this part is where it gets a little confusing. This is where we're proving cash. So it says cash on hand at the beginning of the month. So they give you that amount right here. It says the March 1st balance of the cash account was $6,544.15. That goes here. Plus the total cash received during the month. So the total cash received during the month is coming from the cash debit column in the cash receipts journal. So 900, uh, sorry, $9,212.85. You're going to add these two together to see what it equals. Then it says less total cash paid during the month. So that would be the credit postings to the cash account, or basically that's coming from the cash payments journal. Um, and the amount is given here. Um, so we're subtracting to give us an amount, and that sh amount should match what was on the um, next unused check stub. Now we get to the posting. The posting is pretty simple, a little tedious, but we are just going from um, the sales journal and posting to the, um, we're first posting to the accounts receivable ledger for the total in the accounts receivable column. So total store, total stores, we would go, um, just gonna shrink this down so you can see, sorry, that's Taylor stores, um, is going to be debited for the total amount. So $3,475.36, you can see that here. And then we put the post reference 150 at the top. Then the next is Southwestern University. So we're going to put that here, Southwestern University, okay? Then we're going to continue to post to the subsidiary ledger, or also known as the accounts receivable ledger. So we're posting accounts receivable credit for Jenkins and Sanders. So you can see that here, Jenkins and Sanders. On the fourth, we're posting. Then luxury suites, we are posting here. On the ninth, here's the amount. And then Daniel Smith promotions will go here. Okay, so now we've posted everything to the accounts receivable ledger. So I'm just going to shrink all these down for you. Um, and then the next step is going to be to post to the general ledger. So pretty simple. We are just going through and we are going to um, post the total. So accounts receivable, debit, sales credit, sales tax payable credit. These totals are posted and then we're putting the account number in parentheses. Um, we're going to put check marks under the general debit and credit column and then we're posting to accounts receivable. It's a credit. Sales is credited. 
sales tax payable is credited, sales discount is debited, and cash is debited. And then our last step is to complete the schedule of accounts receivable. So we're taking the totals owed to us from each one of the customers. And then we are um, adding them all together to figure out what the total of accounts receivable is. And that should match what we have in the general ledger.